What's going on everybody? My name is Jerry, you're watching 3DHP, and today on Next One Carbon I've got a lot of Polymaker film that I've been using up, and we're printing aliens. Lots of aliens! Here's a peek, and we'll get into it right after this. Aliens! And we still got a couple more parts to go in. So we're getting there. Polymaker filament's looking awesome. I got some tan. I just loaded up so I can finish these last couple of parts. Okay guys, here's where we're at. We've got everything printed. We're going to glue everything up. i got to strip all the, off all the organic supports right now. We'll get everything glued together and then we'll uh, talk about everything and what happened. <laughs> now, Gambody recently had a big sale. I don't remember their 100... They had some kind of a big anniversary sale. Then they had a Father's Day sale. And I was looking on their website and I'll have the link right here on the screen and in the video description. But I figured, I, I, I'm, in, I'm in Vegas, I got aliens, I've got my xenomorph alien, i got my four foot Paul that I did. Well, when I bought these files, they're normally $25, I got them for like $17.36, something like that, which is almost nothing. So I downloaded all the different versions you, you could download, where you can print them in one piece for resin, uh, multiple pieces for FDM, or you know, they got another file where they're broken down even smaller. So I jumped into one folder. I printed out all the pieces, and when I did that, I went into Bamboo Studios. I took the file for the base for the Paul. I made it as big as I could on it. That way, I wouldn't have to cut it up. So that's how big I wound up making the whole model, which is like 600%. And then when I put the body and the head in, it was it sized it up to 600%. Obviously, it was too tall for the X1 carbon. So then I used a slice feature, the cut feature, in Bamboo Studio, and I cut it down here on the neck, and, I, and then I'll glue it all back together. Then I went on to the second model, and I've done the same type of thing, but then I, somewhere along the way, I screwed up. I, did, I made most of the aliens larger. One of them was going to be a little bit too small, and some of the parts weren't fitting. So that's where I had to reprint some stuff, and that wasn't showed in the time lapse I just showed you when I had to reprint a few things. And then I decided that other than Paul, I'll probably let them, all of them freestand on their feet and not put them all on bases. Now, they'll look really cool like that, but I'll have to be careful they don't get bumped or they may fall over. So let's get to stripping right now, gluing everything together, and then we'll come back for the big reveal and we'll check out some awesome colors. Here we go. Unlocks a code and 
rolling dice in the city of sin Fire up the printer, let the build begin Crossing boundaries, what a reckless thrill Bringing alien tales to life feels so real Subscribe, man, keep the dream alive 3D HP taking you for a ride In a neon night with the motions tight Keep the content rolling, baby, alright Like and subscribe, man, keep the dream alive 3D HP taking you for a ride In the neon night with the motions tight Keep the content rolling, baby, alright surrounded by aliens <laughs> anyway yeah I had a mishap there you know this table that I built a long time ago for doing live streaming and just a pile of junk on when I'm working in my hobby room it has casters on it yes they have wheel locks do you think I ever remember to uh, press the lock on one of the wheels so it don't move and as you've seen there I slowed down the time lapse I bumped the table Paul fell over Knocked off Master Chief and something else fell off. Thank God Master Chief didn't hit the floor and break. Oh, man. It's always something. So I figured I'd just leave that in there and let you guys go, Oh, no! Like I did. That's what I was thinking when it happened. But yeah, like the table right now is not locked. And if I bump it, or one of my dogs was to, which they don't, everything would fall over. Now, 
As I mentioned, um, when I started printing Paul, I grabbed the one file, I dropped it in a bamboo slicer, I made the base as big as I could, that way I knew how to size up the rest of the model. I didn't want to have to cut the base, I didn't want to print a four foot Paul like I did before. So on these files, they were on sale, I got them like I said, for like $17.50 or something, normally $24. I thought it was only going to be the four aliens, but then I seen the file there with Paul, so wow, that's cool, what a deal, right? And then I sized them up accordingly. Now, and then I dropped some other bases in there and I sized them up. On the first model, after Paul, when I went to the next folder, and I think these were for SLA, I think these were for resin, the other ones I was working with, I picked the parts instead of the whole model and cutting it up, the SDL. I uh, sized something, some things up wrong. The upper body and the head on the little one up front there, it's laying there in pieces, was right but the arms and legs were wrong and I was going to reprint everything. I figured, you know what, that alien's too little. So I waited till I got pretty much all these, well I did, I waited till they all got done before I started gluing them together. And then I realized I liked this new size. And this new size and all these other four that you see here are uh, 23 inches tall. And this pole back here is 20, about 27 inches. This one right here. So, like I said, and these other ones are 23 inches. So, they came out a nice size. I started to print bases for all of them. One of them I had laying up there. But you know what? I like them standing just the way they are. So, as long as they're propped up somewhere, sitting where they won't fall over, you know, they look perfectly fine just being on their feet. If I should, since I own the files, sure, I could go ahead and print the rest of the bases. That little tiny paw up there, you know what? I'll more likely, since I got part of it done, I'll go back on there, I'll probably figure what size I made it, and I'll print the legs and the arms out and finish that one. Then I have another sign there, like I have one right here. It says, uh, warning area 51, do not enter. I have another one up there, but that other one is designed to go into the base with one of the statues. So I'll wait and see what I do. But this Polymaker filament, you know, it's beautiful, man. They're not painted yet, that's right. As you know, I, sometimes I paint, sometimes I don't. Actually, I, I paint less than I should. Um, I have a little sanding to do. I'll do a little bit, put, a little putting um, where I, where the seams are on them here and there, and a little minor sanding underneath the chins and a few places. But other than that, they came out per per perfect. And you know, as I ran out of film and I grabbed that other poly maker, I threw it in the X1 carbon. I'm not using my AMS. So I don't want to wear out the unit when I'm not using it for one, more than one color. So I use a single spool, put it onto the left of the printer on the spool holder. In the rear, not the one on the machine, but one that sits on the table. It was a Chris Riley design, I think, a long time ago. Chris Riley was using one like it. It's like an A-shape. You put the spool on it, you got the three plastic nuts, a big one on top, and the two down here. That's my spool holder of choice that I typically use. And the heads I printed, zero infill. Um, most of the arms and the legs are 5% infill. I think a few of the bodies I had hollow, but then the rest were 5% infill. Uh, 0.20 layer height. Came out amazing. I love aliens. I live in Las Vegas. I'm not too far away from Mary 51. And uh, yeah, came out great. And like I say, got Paul right here on the base. If I want, I can take him off. He stands perfectly fine without the base. So I may or may not use him with the base. I may or may not glue him to the base. He's more stable if he's on a base. He don't tip over like he did in the video. But yeah, the Polymaker film is wonderful stuff. I'm a partner with Polymaker, and uh, yeah, there'll be links down below to Polymaker. If you want to use my link to buy filament, it would help out my channel immensely. Immensely, I get a very small commission, and personally, since I've been a partner for quite a while now, I don't think anybody's ever used my link, because I've never noticed anything on my account where I made any kind of a commission on it, but it doesn't matter. Whether you use the link or not, Polymaker is one of the best filaments out there. I highly recommend it. Gambody, like I say, even if their stuff isn't on sale, they've got tons and tons of models. And they got all kinds of stuff. They got spaceships, they got cars, they got statues. Um, a little bit of anything and everything. Check out gambody.com. I'll have it here on the screen. There'll be a link in the description. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I occasionally print their models. They have a great price. And yeah, so, but my four foot Paul, that got broke twice. I need to put, use some resin and glue him back together. My big alien here, the Xenomorph Alien from Wicked 3D. Which broke and fell in half and shattered on the floor. He's pretty much put back together. He does have some holes in him here and there and cracks and a few more things that needs to be fixed. But he's sitting on his base. He has a, a bungee cord hooked to his waist. 
And where he broke apart before, he's ready to put it back together. So that shouldn't happen again. As long as I don't run into it or break it, this arm right here. Because in order for me to stand where I am, with every these models laying down, I gotta pull the table out with some rollers, and I gotta kinda go up underneath that arm right here that I just grabbed and uh, get back here. But I hope you liked the video. Please like, subscribe, share. Yeah, I do resin printing. I do 3D printing. I have a fiber laser, badass fiber laser from How TN. I've got a Roly uh, Mark II dial laser, one of the best on the planet. Best dial lasers I've ever had up to this point. I've got a couple Saints Mark CNCs in the garage. I got another really cool laser coming from How TN here in probably 45, 50 days. That'll be out in the garage. It will be really cool. It will rival the Thunderbolt that's out there, but I don't know yet until I get it. We'll wait and see. Specs on it look really good, so it'll be cool to see. And yeah, this is all, like I said, done on Next One Carbon. And uh, yeah, like, subscribe, share. I'm just rattling on. Thank you to all my channel subscribers. I really appreciate each and every one of you, or excuse me, my channel members on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to me on YouTube. It's free to do so. Uh, Twitch. I'm on Twitch every Saturday, 12 p.m. Pacific. Twitch and YouTube. I do a live stream with makers from around the world. We kind of hang out and chit chat about this or that. You never know who might pop in or who might be in chat. And that happens every Saturday on Twitch and YouTube over on 3DHP. And I don't know what else to say. Like, subscribe, share. Follow me on Twitch. Follows are free. If you want to use your Amazon Prime on Twitch, you, you can do that too. That's, that'd be really cool of you. Trying to help the channel grow. I just turned 60 like June 12th. I'm getting old. Well, anyway, I feel like I'm getting old. You know, I retired like 11 years ago from construction here in Vegas. And I'm just babbling on. So everybody have an awesome day. Later now.